Hi guys, here's this week's top crypto news for realtors. Texas has become the mecca for Bitcoin mining operations in the U.S. What's so appealing about Texas? MasterCard is offering a crypto service to banks. How's that going to work? And NFTs haven't really been in crypto news recently, but 1.8 billion in NFT royalties were paid out. Who's making bank? Hi, I'm Rich Hopin, the creator of Crypto News for Realtors. I write a weekly newsletter, I make YouTube videos, and I have a podcast, and I'm a real estate broker with Compass in New Jersey. But before I jump into this week's news, if you could do me a huge favor, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel to stay up to date on current news. So let's get into it. Bitcoin mining operators flock to Texas in search of stranded energy. Texas leaders and regulators have welcomed Bitcoin miners into the state. But in addition to a friendly regulatory environment, environment, miners are attracted to stranded energy. What is stranded energy? Well, there's a large petroleum reserve in West Texas known as the Permian Basin, and it contains abundance of oil and natural gas. Much of that natural gas, however, isn't captured into any pipeline. Instead, it's released into the atmosphere. This stranded energy is burned off and wasted. Bitcoin miners scour the state and search for stranded energy, and they work out arrangements with the landowner to use that gas to power their generators for their computers. However, most of the electricity used by the miners isn't stranded energy. Instead, it's directly from the grid. Miners claim that they stabilize the electric grid because during peak electricity demand, they can power off their computers. And this past summer on July 11th, during a record heat wave, every Bitcoin miner shut down their operation and it prevented the need for this state's power company to have rolling blackouts. Miners, however, would like to run their operations continuously. One interesting venture run by former Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey is a $12 million Bitcoin mining project in West Texas and is powered by solar panels. So the project stores electricity in Tesla batteries so that the computers can operate when the skies are overcast or during nighttime. The pilot project is currently unprofitable, but the founders expect to find a path to profitability. MasterCard offers crypto services to banks. MasterCard partnered with Paxos Trust Company and launched a crypto trading and custody program for banks. Paxos will provide the crypto services and MasterCard will integrate the services into the bank's user interfaces. Now recently, and I reported this last week, Visa launched a partnership with crypto exchange FTX to offer debit cards in more than 40 countries. Galaxy reports 1.8 billion in NFT royalties. Galaxy a crypto analytics firm reported that over 1.8 billion in royalties were paid to creators of Ethereum-based NFT collections. The average royalty paid on OpenSea doubled to 6% from 3% last year. The major NFT brands earned hundreds of millions of dollars in income from royalties generated on secondary sales. The report found that 10 entities brought in 27% of all royalties and 482 NFT collections accounted for 80% of all royalties. Here are the top 10 entities and their earned royalties. Number one, Yuga Labs, which you may know their name. They're the ones that have the Board 8 Yacht Club uh, NFTs. They earned 147 million. So they were number one. Number two, Art Blocks. They earned 82 million. Number three, OpenSea Storefront Creator. 77 million for Chira Labs, 52 million. Proof of Collective Moonbirds earned 31 million. The Sandbox was number six at 26 million. Doodles at 24 million. That was number seven. Number eight, uh, V Friends by our good friend Gary Vaynerchuk. They brought in 21 million. Not a bad payday, Gary V. At ninth was NFT Worlds, 15 million. And 10, World of Women. 13 million. That's it for this week's top crypto news. If you're curious about how blockchain will impact banking, particularly our payment system, check out this week's crypto class in my newsletter. You can find the link below in the show notes. Before I go, I wanted to share the highlights of an interesting Wall Street Journal opinion piece by former Securities and Exchange Commissioner Arthur Levitt and Ram Alawalia, CEO of Lumida, a digital asset advisory firm. So they argued that the SEC, Congress, and the crypto industry really needed to work through the thorny regulatory issues. They said this regulatory standoff poses a risk to the growth of blockchain 
and cryptocurrency technology. No matter what regulators do, they should not stifle the innovation that is the heart of this market. Blockchain is the first technology that enables two parties to transact without a centralized intermediary such as an exchange, broker, or bank, and the implications are profound. The authors then state that the crypto industry needs to accept oversight and the regulators need to go beyond enforcement. So that's that's a not too subtle comment about Gary Gensler, who's been criticized of regulating by enforcement. And then, then they add that there's clearly no existing path to compliance. They say that the SEC should provide constructive guidance to the crypto market and Congress should develop stablecoin audit standards. And they conclude that if agreement is reached among the parties, quote, the U.S. can strengthen its standing as the world's leading capital market and global reserve currency, end quote. Now, I'll be surprised if any clear guidance from regulatory agencies or any bills from congressional committees emerge before the congressional session begins in January. In the meantime, let's keep learning more about crypto. And if you have any crypto comments or questions, write them below or reach out to me directly. And remember, stay crypto curious. It's still super early days in crypto, and now's a great time to become crypto savvy. And if you have any questions at all about New Jersey real estate, reach out to me. I'm your guy. That's it. I'll see you next time.